E-Gaming Bets. We accept bets on computer games online since 2011. Referral system for regular users and the first deposit bonus. Gaming Devices Store and the best choice of payment systems. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, Counter-Strike and StarCraft, World of Tanks and League of Legends. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. G2A.com. The best video game store ever. Fast as lightning, solid as a rock, cheap as duck. <laughs> What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace. Remember G2A.com, the best video game store ever.
Hello guys, we're back again. Dota Pit Action NA qualifiers continue with the grids. Uh, starting to fill itself out. I'm Durka here in the JD studio, as always, bringing you this lovely, lovely action from, from G2A themselves. Now, Enemy GG, we saw them last night have a decent time. They lost to Complexity, they beat Leviathan 2-0, but now they're against Digital Chaos, and we've got a pretty interesting draft to kick things off, so I think I'm going to welcome in my, uh, well, first of all, Stats Lady. Lurka is going to be on Stats tonight, but also my co-caster, Mott Packs. What is this hero DC have picked up, man? What is that? I'm not too sure here. It appears to be some sort of a new character in the game. No, uh, very popular, obviously. Usually first banned. Instead, it appears they opted to ban out the Earth Spirit. And that means they'll get the Oracle for themselves. So we can expect maybe some YOLO type carries kind of running into the action. You know, they always used to talk about that whole Huskar thing. But, uh, well, goodbye to that fella. But similar idea, maybe a PA or something like that. And uh, no, I'm excited. And then, of course, the Tidehunter. Like, like well, where is that coming from, man? Is Are they just straight up just saying, like, look, this is our off lane. We're just going with the Tidehunter. We don't want any of those other top tiers that left. I mean, there's a Darkseer still in the pool. It's it's Got super interesting, huh? I mean, you were talking about Darkseer last night and the fact that there is that sort of side camp off, uh, offset from the off lane. We talked a lot about tide, like the, the changes to the camps now, where there's, you know, the magic resist creeps and stuff like that. People who like to spam out with magical damage into stat camps are... Yeah, they're nerfed a fair amount, but Tide has physical damage, which you can actually clear camps and ancients with. So if he's the guy heading into the off lane and potentially in a dual lane, that could work out pretty decently for him if he does stack up the camp himself. My, my big question is why Abaddon is the second pick for any uh, for me. It's pr uh, it's pretty solid just because they like running it in the offlane, and I think that is a really strong role for the hero right now that a lot of teams aren't that comfortable with and probably not that comfortable versing. Now, you are up against, obviously, an NA stack who it's a little bit more familiar in the pub sense there, but uh, I think it's hard to punish. It's very good for agitating any sort of a safe lane carry that you want to go for. Um, so, like, they've, they banned out the gyro, but other than that, they're not even really focusing on it. Um, they're just opting to go, with, like, kind of towards the mid lane and even a little bit of some Enchantress flare thrown out there. <laughs> a little bit concerned about uh, what 1437 might pull out or... I'm not sure. They were, obviously, Owie as well could be Five whipping that one out. Remaining. So both very comfortable on the heroes. Both uh, both drafts looking fairly Reserve similar. You know, time. you've got a very defensive support in the Witch Doctor and, of course, the Oracle as well. And then some pretty tanky offlaners. So a lot more control from the Tidehunter, but uh, kind of double survivability right now for enemy GG. And we saw, if there's one thing they love, it's getting BSJ, something like an Ursa, and he just dominates the game, or the Terrorblade as well, both banned out rightfully so. So I, I expect they're just trying to keep him up running and uh, killing people. <laughs> Apparently I... Sc oh, God. Why is that so loud? All oh, my goodness. What is going on here? Everything was fine last night. Now, let's see. That's, that's very... That's very, very interesting. <laughs> Apparently I was a little ears? bit too... A little bit... Rip ears, yeah. Apparently I was a little bit too sharp when I started off. Right. I've turned, my sound, uh, my, turned myself down a touch. But uh, yeah, nothing, nothing has changed from last night. I'm, I'm a little bit confused here. A little bit confused. Right now, I like the Terror Blade ban from DC last night. Yeah, we saw enemy GG what have like a bad an ogre plus invoker, and they had alacrity, bloodlust, shield on Terror Blade, yeah. and it was, it was awful. <laughs> it was horrendous. They were destroying tier three towers in like 15 Dire minutes. It was crazy team. stuff. But what are they going to pump up this game? We've, we've seen Lone Druid from. From EG with a similar kind of strat, but you don't have Invoker, there's no Alacrity. So maybe someone that has that physical damage or attack speed already up, that you just shield them and bloodlust them. Well, you do have, uh, we know BSJ loves the Slark, and it's pretty nice up against those beefy guys like Tidehunter. Uh, anything that you're going to be just ripping into him, there's not much he can do. Like, yeah, he can reduce your damage, but it's not going to stop you from stealing the Essence stacks. Uh, as well, he does recover fairly well out of Ravage, too. One of the better parts of Slark, and... The other thing is that Dragon Knights don't also um, max the stun anymore. Radiant so team. for now, they are going to grab the Ember Spirit. Uh, obviously, could be mid, could be safe lane. We'll see where they want to go with that. But hmm. now with the Dragon Knight, the threat of the Ravage, now the push of the wards, it's uh, pretty easy to guess what Digital Chaos are going for here, I think. It's very snappy drafting as well from DC. It's just like hero after hero. They know what they want. They know when they're going to get it. It's uh, it's nice to see. Whereas enemy GG, they're very sort of calculated, thinking, okay, they've picked this. Definitely remaining. looking to counteract what Digital Chaos are doing. But when you look at enemy GG right Five now, where is their D push? Where is their out spam? Because they don't have any. They've got Cask. Throw that out a little bit. They've they've got Ember Spirit once he gets up and back. running. But you need a good, 
I don't know, 25, 30 minutes threshold to build Ember Spirit up. If the push from DC comes thick and fast, and you can see the Lycan being banned out there by enemy, it's it's scary stuff, honestly. So the, for their mid hero, I, I don't know, a Wind Ranger Ten maybe with power memory. shot, but you Might need be, something that yeah. can just crush creep waves. Five they might go for the really? Razor, because I think it's BSJ who does play the Ember Spirit, so it's likely going to be him in the safe lane, and then maybe kind of the Plasma. I mean, it's a little bit risky, but at the same time, he's also fairly tanky, <sighs> um, doesn't care too much if he gets stunned up and everything like that Dying. by like the Shadow Shaman, and I know it's something that they have run before for Slayer. The pool has definitely been thinned out here already. Um, so I, I do like the Wind Ranger as well. I think that would also be pretty solid. Um, something with a little bit of range. I think you definitely want range to help deal with the wards. That can be one of the most frustrating things. And currently, they do have they have like nothing to deal with them. For sure. What else could we actually look at here? I, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. There's Lena, maybe. You know, she's pretty good at Ten sort of counter pushing. The scariest thing though is Digital Chaos, right? They have Dragon Knight hitting a tower. They've got Shadow Shaman to place wards. You can't walk into these two heroes it's without a tide hunter behind them, you know, having a ravage and saying, time. "Well." Stop us. Stop us pushing into the tower. We'll just ravage you, then disengage. We'll actually fight you as we see fit. It's, it's a rough Is spot Viper for enemy GG. So I think with Alina, having the ability to just like nuke one target and get the numbers advantage mm. may be the way to go. Yeah, I guess it depends on how... It probably comes down to hero preferences, honestly, at this point. Like, I'm kind of thinking, like, sometimes it's nice to stack survivable heroes up with some, like, uh, Abaddon and stuff like that, where, like, the Ten Viper, right? Like, all that remaining. Corrosive Skin, you get more value out of it the more you're healing up the Viper and everything like that, so... Five seconds um, remaining. But I kind of like Lino or Razor here, but... Seven. Then for Digital Chaos... Okay, that's range. That's one way to deal with Radiant wards. Wonder. This is some old-school 6.83 stuff, man. Ogre okay. Magi Sniper. Buff him up. Let's go. Interesting. <laughs> Shrap oh, shrapnel. <laughs> shrapnel kind of helps against pushes, but not really in the in the common sense. But all right, digital chaos. Two supports off lane at mid dragon knight. I'm assuming, and they go with a morphling. Hell yeah! Oh, oh, you didn't see that coming. I mean, <laughs> okay, mod packs. I know you. I knew you got like six or seven calls on heroes <laughs> correct last night, but morphling. No, I have no idea what this is going to be. Morphling. I don't even know if they've ever... Well, I'm sure they must have run it like once or twice. Oh. oh, who knows? It's a new patch. It's a new day. I'm Do sure, whatever you want. I'm sure our Statswoman Lurker is going to have an absolute field day with this. I can already see Skype actually uh, actually flashing up. Yep, yep. It's her. It's her in the little Skype chat. What the... Is this draft? <laughs> she, can, she can correct me when I'm inevitably wrong, but I have zero recollection of... They, I, there was one more fling. Okay, and from what I can tell very quickly, it appears they had one more fling, and they won it. And... That was a long time ago. History in the okay, making. Okay, yeah, no, this is no. They haven't had one in a real game. <laughs> History in the making. Well, Lumdum is going to be playing that Witch Doctor again. Prepare We've seen him play battle. Witch Doctor a fair amount over the past couple of days. Observe wards and uh, nothing else. He's, he's got his gold back in the fountain. He can bring it out on the courier if he needs some stats or regen. BSJ sniper up to top, so it will be Slayer's Ember Spirit for mid. Frozen as well as Sovereign. Did we did we see this from them before, the dual offlane Ogre Abaddon? I can't remember. Uh, they had them on the same team, but he kind of moved around a bit. He was mostly up there, if I recall. Because we talked about how it might have been Ogre and dying, and then they picked up the Abaddon, and, and yeah, it was pretty much that. Oh, yeah. Okay. They were BFFs. We'll see what they head up to. AUI gets his Observer down on the lane very early on. Changes is, uh, is Yawa, I believe. So uh, he's going to be heading up on the Morphling. TC Dragon Knight. So it's going to be Morphling safe lane. Dragon Knight mid, yeah. No big surprises there. 1437. Oracle. Well, up at top is Bulba. They're off lane Tidehunter. Double Mango Strat. He's going to walk straight into enemy here. All five of them, in fact, with the stun from that cast. The shrapnel will slow. But there's no kill potential here onto that Tidehunter just yet. Well, let's say we'll just trade off the runes then. So the mid lane... It's going to be a Dragonite versus the... It is the Ember, I assume, right? He is, yeah, he's coming begins. mid, so... That shouldn't be all too bad. I don't know, probably not going to be a real concise winner. I don't think Frozen's going to be rotating in much. I don't envision Aoi getting a very good rotation. He has boots first, but he'll probably just be too busy trying to handle this dual offlane. That, that'll just be a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one. and as long as TC's Courier doesn't die, this should just be split pretty even, assuming he's going get, to be getting those points into the Dragon's Blood. Now... Double mango on offlaners has become pretty popular and pretty common. It's double, so good. Double mango on support witch doctor. 
I know Limdon bought one yesterday on his Witch Doctor. I can't remember if he bought two, but let's see how that works out for him. I mean, forgoing stats, no salver or anything like that. He's still got tangos. He's going to try and trade hits here with Bulbous Tide, and I guess it's working out for now. Getting the better of him over the next couple of seconds for sure. Yeah, it's actually really nice. Like, he doesn't have to use any regen right now. He, there's no reason for him to tango up. Like, he has no threat of death. By the time that he needs to regen, he'll have been back up there just from these mangoes. So he's only 0.2 behind the regen of Bulba when he doesn't have a tango going. I mean, Bulba's got double mangoes himself, so it's, it's pretty fine for him. Mid lane Slayer up against TC. And so far, Dragonite is winning out here with Breathe Fire being incredibly annoying to deal with for sure. Slayer's going to have his work cut out for him, but it's the bottom lane I think that we have to really look at. Morphling's early game threat and potential, it's not quite there until level 3. <laughs> You've got right-click damage, but uh, until that waveform comes out. Yeah, well, and they're 100. up against the, the dastardly duo. 2-0. and oh. Can't stop the, the pain train coming, man. <laughs> it's Ogre. Look at this. 5.2 regen. Do you see any mangoes? One mango. 5.2. Like, what a hero, honestly. That's insane. And Sovereign just walks over and look at AUI, he's so afraid of what's going to be happening here. Sovereign gets last hits inside the pool camp, and Shadow Shaman can't do anything. The Oracle comes across and throws out a few little projectiles into him, but it doesn't really matter. Lumdon going to control mid lane a bit, helping out Slayer's Ember Spirit. So now it's enemy, I think, that they've got the upper hand in lane, kind of lane balance and lane strength. Sort of unkillableness or whatever, you, you know, they, they can't be stopped, basically. The actual threat on these lanes to get kills the opposite way isn't that great either, though. So it's just trading farm. And if you look at it that way, 10 and 4, 10 and 0 for your Ember and the Sniper. The Tidehunter, even with the Abaddon, you're definitely winning out across these lanes. And they've even moved Witch Doctor down here, so it's an aggressive try lane for them. Yeah, I actually say, I have to say, if I think if anyone's going to die first in these lanes, it'll probably be BSJ, simply because I find Tidehunter is just so beefy that... Uh, eventually, when he just skills up Gush all of a sudden, you can randomly die to him, similar to like the Omni Slash from Juggernaut or something like that. So BSJ, he, he can't get too cocky up there, because things can turn around pretty fast up against the Tide Hunter. Well, Frozen was expecting his Witch Doctor to come in a little bit sooner, I think, but it was good spread from DC down on bot. He popped his Mango through the Ignite, and he was starting to chase them down, but there was no real follow through from the rest of his team. How are we looking mid, though? <laughs> pretty balanced, pretty even. Bottle has already come out. Been Both full HP. Just like, yeah. <laughs> what a boring well, thing. I mean, they're just going to be bottle crow. Um, <laughs> hang on a second. Yeah, they're, they're both just going to bottle crow and make the most yeah. of this lane, I guess. Just trading farm. That's, that's the thing. All of these lanes is about trading farm. Apart from maybe top, but Bulba now with two in Kraken Shell, he should be fine against the Sniper. You know, even even with Wraith Band and soon to be Phase Boots. Maybe, maybe that's the turning point. When Sniper gets Phase Boots, that might be when Tide starts thinking about stacking this camp. Yeah, that's a good point, actually, and unfortunately there won't be any random to do it for him, but... Like, currently, Sniper hits Sidehunter, uh, and he does what? He does, like, 30 damage per pop. <laughs> if he, uh, if he hits the Kraken Shield and everything like that, so... He's feeling pretty good about himself for now for Bubba. Might want a little bit more regen, maybe get a bottle of his own. Um, but with a Morphling and a Dragonite, it might not be possible this game. Bulba's level 6 is pretty important as well. Like, you look at enemy, what what big ultimates are there going to be readily available that can really turn the tides? It's maybe Witch Doctor Death Ward, Sniper ulti? But once Tide hits level 6, level 7, starts TPing around maybe reacting to things, oh, if only he was level 6 now, TC. Oh, they might get a chase under his tower, but he turns to stun Slayer, now he's stunned back, but TC will drop first. And the first blood goes to Slayer, he will die though to this fall. Oh, no he won't. Bottle charge through. Keeps himself alive. That's the kill with the rotation of enemy towards mid. Well, that's pretty questionable because they have this ward down bottom for the side of DC. Like, how do you... They clearly knew the supports were going to be there. Well, Sovereign, they'll be in a little bit of trouble here. Can they clean him up with the waveform? Looks like it, but either way, like, how does your mid die to that when it's just so obvious that there's nowhere else they're going to be? Like, they have ward coverage everywhere else. It feels like maybe he just got caught off guard because of this new opening over here on the side, and that's where they walked in for the stun, but... Maybe some TPs on those two defensive supports that you drafted might be nice. <laughs> Well, it's just like, right, I'm trading farm, trading farm, passive laning stage, you know, nothing really going on. All of a sudden, these two supports from the off lane appear. It's, uh, yeah, like you said, maybe, maybe DC communication. Oh, he's back on top of him. Straight in there with the Maldix, what, level one? He's doing a ton of damage to Slayer. He's got the shield on him. When it pops, down goes the DK. And AUI's TP not really going to come to anything except maybe his own death. Giving away two for nothing there as Digital Chaos 
<laughs> this early laning stage, you know, enemy looks unkillable. But the fact they're now getting something out of this. Bulba needs a TP and he needs to start moving around, I feel. Yeah, it's questionable. Like, do you want to... BSJ is obviously playing pretty far back now that he has the two points in the take game, so it's going to be pretty hard to get that Ravage kill. Um, even with his little squishiness, they would need a smoke and probably from the Shadow Shaman. And with 1437 coming top, that might be what's happening here. Maybe get a stack off. No, yeah, they're just getting ready for the kill. So it'll probably be Owie TPing in with a smoke, or nope. His TP's on cooldown. He's going to run himself around. Because BSJ Sniper, he is farming you know, merrily away up on this top lane. And they'll actually TP the Witch Doctor, feeling something's not quite right. Where's the yeah. Oracle? Where's Shadow Shaman? Where are these supports? I could potentially set up a kill for someone, and yep, yeah, Observer Wood goes down, looking for those TPs in. Enemy yeah, well they prepared. can see 1437 right now, too, so they're going to go for it, and it misses. That was... And now they turn. Now they know that the fight is theirs. They'll kill off 1437. No way. He stops the magic damage coming in, but the right-click attacks from BSJ will be enough to secure it. Ravage wasted completely. Kill given away again, and Digital Chaos, they've got a lot of making up to do. Now you look down to bottom lane, Sovereign, charging around on his horsey. Hey, why? He's already got the Ignite on him, but there's no mana left for Frozen. So he'll back himself away until they decide that clicks need to come back in. Yellow has taken an absolute beating here. Sovereign isn't level 6. This may be a kill onto him. Yeah, with the damage. They also oh, hold nice. Frozen in place. Good turnaround. Frozen's the one in trouble, but guess what? 8 armor, 700 HP. It takes more than just a few hits in from Yawa's Morphling to finish him off. Well, Markle does what he does best and steals both kills for the double. Pretty nice hero for getting that done. 500 gold, and if that's how you want to build it, and you do want to be that greedy guy, Oracle's definitely the one for you. And you can get some very early arcane boots, which will help with the Shadow Shaman, but at the same time, we all know how greedy Shadow Shaman likes to be. Trying to get a little bit of that fire for himself, maybe stealing some kills with the Aether Shock, so... I'm not sure what their distribution's gonna look like. They might not have a choice here, they're just trying to get all the recovery kills they can. And uh, I gotta say, uh, although they just dropped their, you know, the kills down bottom there, I think enemy have been playing better. Top like that rotation up top by the Witch Doctor playing the level six or the uh, six minute ward. Like everyone knows, six minutes that's when you want to kill the safe laner, right? Like this is like clockwork every single game. So it's good to see them taking those precautions. It's something that we don't see a lot out of the more um, amateur teams. And it's nice to see a team that's finally, you know, getting some sponsorships. Looking pretty good here, and they're gonna they try and get. Oh, they have the damage! Wow, oh, that was so close. So close, but Slayer picks up the kill again onto Yawa, killing spree on your Ember Spirit. And the issues I had with enemies draft, the fact they don't have any D-push. If they don't allow DC to push to begin with, then it's fine. They've got a great start on Ember Spirit, he's now level 8. 4200 net worth, and he's starting to really race ahead of the rest of the pack here. And BSJ. Classic style, phase boots, Philip, Yasha, yep. every hero. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, that's kind of his thing to do here. Maybe mix it up with some drums or a Midas here or there, but none so far. Sovereign, he'll probably be going for what we saw yesterday with the phase boots, Vlad's definitely the most standard one. There is a big rotation coming top, though. Yep, TC and Fortnite both smoked up. Ball but Ravage hits two, and they're going to get BSJ oh, here with the DD so Dragon down. Knight. Simple pick off onto both. Limbs actually get finished off by Bulba's Gush. That's, that's good. Uh, that's a good little move there from Digital Chaos. Radiant's Getting two kills. They're losing a bit of damage denied. on the mid tower, but they Radiant's also denied top tier one. Can you believe that we've only seen... Wow, that's insane. So few, so few. 28 snipers in the past two patches. It was a nice time, you know, after 6.83. We really needed that. Now he makes his first appearance of this patch. Oh, Yawar. Is he going to go down here? He's got morph and he's got five stick. He's got stick charges and bottle. There's more ignite. Oh, go, go, They're come on! You're this. an ogre. He's, he can waveform to the east and then TP away. But I think Slayer's going to chase this one through. Oh, the TP's already there. He gets the slight chains and Slayer. What a player! Dives into the trees and they've killed the Yawar off again. And that's just four dire heroes. And you know Yawar is just like pinging like hello, team. I just got dove under my tower by four heroes. And they don't have this ward, like, they don't have the equal vision to know when this stuff's coming. To watch a wick do uh, witch doctor just calmly walking down to your tower for no reason. <laughs> well, what wards do they have? Like, DC have a ward between tier 1, tier 2 Radiant's mid, and that's it. They don't have any defensive lane wards anywhere, really, apart from... Well, I guess this could Radiant's be counted as defensive, watching for the TPN behind the tower, and then the movement forward. But there's nothing else. 
Well, try and take tier 1 up at top lane. Glyph comes out, but it's all about enemy getting these trades. They know that they can farm jungle, stop Morphling from farming, stop the stop the Rast getting level 6 even, if they go and jump him down at bottom, because he is all alone on this bottom lane. Oh, TC, he'll grab up the top tower. Did use the arcane rune as well, so it gets the reduced cooldown on the ultimate, which can be nice, but... They're going to have to watch out because Slayer has Radiant's his boots of travels already up. He'll be in all these fights, all these tower pushes, BSJ in the back. Oh, TP's coming in. Do they Radiant's know what's going on? Bulba does not fought. have his Ravage here. Could be a full sense of security having so many numbers. The tower gets denied out by the DK. Radiant's middle tower has been enemy denied. back themselves away as quickly as they possibly can. They didn't Dyer's really all converge onto the same location. Attack. Sovereign low on mana. Slayer just wants to continue farming away. So what was that? 10 minute BOTs? 10 and a half minute BOTs? Yeah, it was around there. Pretty nice for bottle poor mage shield and Aquila. Very for, happy about that. For a mid ember as well. For a mid ember that's yeah. been uh, you know, running around looking for kills. That's insane. Oh, well, he's certainly been finding them. And they're watching Yawar down bottom. Yeah. He's going to try and morph. Waveform himself oh. away. Maledict is pretty good against Morphling, you know. Even if he's morphing to strength, he's still going to take a shit ton of damage with the Death Ward down. I'm not sure he pops from this. Looks Guess like okay. he's Plenty of mana. fine. Oh, of course. We'll come back to it in a second. It's 1437. This turns back onto Slayer. So, Maledict, I'm pretty sure the way it works is different in HP, not necessarily damage taken. So if he's morphing, then he's theoretically not taking damage from, uh, from sources. I think that's the way it works. That's why he didn't take anything, really, from the Maledict. Right at the end there. Yeah. Dota 2. I always forget about that. I always think it's like direct damage taken, but it's like difference in HP or uh, sort of HP lost. More yeah, especially when that's how it works for like, you know, Abaddon or something like that. Like. Yeah. Well, Morphling, it's a hero in the Dota 2 video game. Yet to see what he's up to though. Bottle Ring of Aquilus is kind of kind of the old school traditional safe lane build that we saw a lot from the Chinese teams. Bottle for regen, especially when you're very far ahead or very far behind. It's just that item that you get for a little more split push. Because look at it. It's a level 6 Morphling trying to handle this level 9 Ember Spirit. And when the Ogre comes in, TPs will try and save Yawa here. Slayer's not giving up anytime soon with a slight fist and remnant away. I'll get back to safety for now, but Sovereign is a bad one. Still with his ultimate, still with a photic shield. Ultimate pop, damage dealt. I think he's in a little bit of trouble, except there's no stuns left until the Oracle throws out a uh, fortune's end and gets himself a killing spree. Well, they're they're doing the difficult task here of bringing down this Abaddon. Like, we all know, once he hits level 6, it's supposed to be kind of the terror, the scourge, trying to deal with this. He's been slowed down pretty significantly, though. Um, <laughs> Yawars might be able to catch up to him here. In terms of the net worth chart, obviously not where Morphling wants to be. He'd much rather be up near BSJ in terms of the overall net worth. And I know he's going to play a little bit of a fun carry here. We have a big engagement mid. Oh, Witch Doctor just annihilated. Initially dead, straight off the bat. Frozen, full straight after, and Bulba, he wants BSJ. They might need the Ravage to actually slow him down for long enough, unless they can get another stu uh, stun out here. Because BSJ is very quick on his feet. Bulba doesn't throw it. They're going to try and turn back on the Slayer, but the Remnant is there for him to escape himself out. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit surprised that Ty didn't just ravage for that kill on Sniper, actually. I actually like that he didn't. Um, and that's because he's gone for the mech. And so what this means is that now with this in hand, the aura, even though they've already popped it once, like they can just keep going. But every DK ultimate, the threat of the ravage is so much more important than a kill on BSJ right now. That's true. Because, like, they can just... What, what are they going to do? Because ravage is still held. BSJ would probably be alive by now, anyway. It's like we were saying in the draft. Come at us. We've got Dragon Form up. We're on this tier 2 tower. How do you initiate into the DK, into the Morphling, when there's a Ravage right behind them? Look at Bulba's positioning right now. Sitting behind the Observer Wards, ready to just walk himself in and get this Ravage off. He'll start things off. Slayer, in fact, looks for the chains onto Bulba. That was Killed nice. off the Serpent Wards, but Yawa jumps in, hops himself out with a Replicate. This is time for Digital Chaos to start running away. TC has Shadow Blade back in the fountain, but it's getting slowed. The headshot to the cask, not bouncing on 21 Bulba. Here we go, Ravage onto three. Catches them all, but Sovereign's still healing up. TC dropping low with the mouth. Up Death Ward down. TC, even with that uh, Fortune's End, Fate Cedict, whatever the hell it's called, he'll still get dropped in Bulba on the run, but initially taken out as AUI holds him in place to try and get Yawar out of dodge, but he's just being chased and hunted. And even with that big Ravage trying to stem the flow, enemy will get multiple kills here. 
Not a second catch, Yawar over to the end as 1437's damage comes in. Kills off the Abaddon. But false promise. Keep him alive There's a big red sun there. Not for long. <laughs> Not for long. Yeah, right, what's, no, the, that what, was... what's the bloody spell yeah. called where he does... Fate Edict. Okay, it is called Fate Edict. Yeah. That was one of those fights that you could tell from the outset as an observer and as someone who has full vision of the map how badly that was about to go once he ravaged. Because it's one of those things that in the game it's harder to get a sense of like, okay, I'm going to save you and we can turn this fight. Like, we can go, go, go. But you could just see like he ravaged and yeah, he caught four people, but walks back in, throws down an anchor smash on two. But then the death ward starts and everyone else on your team, you're all splintered. You've all been trying to escape as fast as you could. Now you're trying to double back. And I understand why in the heat of the moment that kind of stuff happens, but you just saw how annihilated they got. Um, like they should have just sacrificed TC in, in hindsight, but it's just so tough to make the correct option uh, come forward in games like that. The Ravage and Run should have been the plan. Yeah. TC's Shadow Blade. We can hit Slayer here. Gets the stun down. AUI is going to get to range for the Hex and Shackles, but he doesn't actually have a level in Hex. The 402 build. I don't think I've. Shackles. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. That is uh, that is a little bit unusual. Um, certainly. Considering most of the time it used to be like, sometimes when you see shackles, or level 1 shackles, and they're just maxing the hex and everything like that, but... You know, keep the buffs up, and we have a 16 minute Midas on your hard farmer. That's a hard game right there. Not ideal at all. Now, Sniper. This is, this is not the build. Where's your Dragon's Lance? 1080p? Yeah, where's your 1080, 1080 where's your 1080 get peeped? A little bit interesting. Something to do there. Not too concerned about his own survivability, obviously. Um, just opting for the Manta for the increased farm speed. Uh, as well as a little bit of survivability. Hmm. Oh, is there legitimately an update that's just been released? Yep. An update has just been released, guys. <laughs> oh, if, if that comes live after this game, we're going to be playing a different game. Did they save Invoker? Uh, Alacrity Invoker damage, not gonna get dumpstered? Alacrity damage speed rescaled pretty massively. Level 1 is down by 20. Oh, thank goodness. But see, that's great, because now the hero won't get destroyed. He's not gonna get Huskard or something, because they let it go for too long. I actually like that, because I still like Invoker as a hero. It's yeah. comical and impressive to watch, so... Good stuff. There's Good stuff, Ice Frog. You're the man. There are a lot of changes. Well, that's a decent amount of changes. Like 30... 30 balance changes there across uh, across six or seven heroes. It's, it's pretty good. We'll, we'll talk about that after the game, I think, though. Indeed. So I'm pretty sure it's going to go live straight after this, and both teams will be like, ah, well, is Invoker really worthy of that first ban straight off anymore? We'll see. That's been, uh, that's been scaled back a bit. But yeah, back to this game. 9k net worth on your sniper. How are we actually looking overall? Enemy, they had like a 2k, uh, 2K net worth lead. Dropped to zero, back up to 1k after that flight towards mid. So it's looking it's looking okay for them. The big thing though is Slayer's Battle Fury. That's up in about a thousand gold. Once he has that, it's gonna be like pre-20 minutes. He's gonna start crushing these pushes in from DC. Unless the blink on AUI can make that big difference in these team fights. Oh. With Ravage in hand, of course. It's always, it's always going to be a better option. Hopefully, maybe they'll get a chance to use it a little more aggressively with the Blink Dagger. And the only thing they do have to be cautious of is now that they're going to be approaching these towers, that Battle Fury is very near to completion. And things are going to get a little bit dicey there because they don't really have... Um, they have the Hex and everything, but obviously... I guess if Aoi can get in there without being blown up by the Ogre Magi, I feel like he's super squishy to kind of blink in and Hex the Ember. But if they can just catch him out for a brief moment, it's certainly possible with that Blink. Oh, double blink. AUI and Bulba, both with that. And this could be team fight winning, game changing. As fourteen thirty seven also has himself a glimmer cape, Dragonite. Not sure. Uh, not sure. Silver Edge is the way to go. It's probably going to be Shadow Blade into BKB. Maybe Shadow Blade into S and Y. We'll see where he heads into. But that's the Battle Fury done. Pretty much bang on the twenty minute mark there for your Ember Spirit. They're wrapping around on Frozen's Ogre. He's tanky, but I don't think he's walking to five enemy heroes tanky. The <laughs> spam of pings come out onto this Ogre. Gushed and pretty much just annihilated, even with the shield down onto him. Abaddon gallops away back to safety. Lumdun, which doctor? I don't think this is a safe neighborhood for you to be in, actually, my friend. Time to run, time to hide. 
As DC drop the wards in the pit and get into Roshan. He does attack with snakes now, right? Or he, he would if they wouldn't? Oh, wait, okay. I'm just gonna assume that, that that still hasn't changed. Either way, grab themselves up the Roshan. Can they do anything here? Ember Spirit's close enough to do something about it. You can spam Slight of Fist, but look at that Oracle. Throws out the uh, Hill Disabled and stops him a little bit. TC oh, geez, he does get dropped relatively low, but BSJ heals up, kept alive just about Bulba. Yeah, where's the Ravage? He's already used it, in fact. Kill off the SJ in the back, and this sniper is gone. He's out. He's done for. Slayer now. The Death Ward is down from Loomdon. It's a good amount of damage, but they just slow them down and trap them in place. Finally, the Shackles in from AUI will secure the kill onto Slayer with that Ether Shock. An enemy. They like, grouped up around the Roche Pit. It just wasn't enough survival through that Tide Ravage and the control that DC have. We'll grab the last little bit of tidbit there and press again. The good old Roshan taking stat. Always gives yourself a much better chance. Obviously with the major gold influx you're getting early in the game. Chance to win a nice big Radiant's early fight with the Aegis. And I gotta say, Owie to me. Standout player in that fight. Well, first off, Bubble obviously got a nice little Ravage off to make sure that TC wasn't get peep wasn't gonna get peeped in the pit, but he had a beautiful blink and was able to disable the Death Ward and immediately shackle up the Ember Spirit as well. So he basically secured, like, not only saving his allies from the Death Wards, but completely securing the kill on top of uh, Slayer there. So uh, very well done. Shows the power of that early blink dagger that we were talking about in terms of the, the greedy shaman. Yeah, that ward as well up on the high ground above the Dire Ancients, that just gave them all the vision in the world. Started off with uh, the old Fortune's End. I'm. I still struggle with Oracle's bloody spell names. So annoying. Adding new heroes like this, especially <laughs> when it's not a hero. Start spamming. Yeah, I've got to start spamming him. Like I know what he does. It's just the names that, uh, that sometimes escape me. It's. I always get like the second word mixed up. So I like false end, false edict, fortunes, flames. You know, pre-purifying <laughs> edict. And, I don't know. It just gets confusing. Well, Ether lends up for your Shadow Shaman. Increased range on Shackles, Hex, throw the wards out. The Blink Dagger is the big one, though. Increased yeah. range on that Blink. Get yourself into that Hex range a little bit sooner. There's uh, Ember Spirit Replicate Illusion wandering around. Nearly stunned up by the Ogre, but he decides better of it. BSJ Sniper, what are you up to? Manta-style Maelstrom. Well, that's a good way to clear out these waves from a good distance. Yeah, it's certainly going to be helping when this push does start to come. And well, Ravage is back up in 10 seconds, Bulba. Obviously farming up there. Probably just going to opt for the Graves next as at least a standard build. Might maybe pick up a 4 staff in between. I would definitely be a fan of that. If he wants to go for that, but... Uh, I'm thinking, how much is Ogre Magi going to contribute now? Obviously, he's going to have the Bloodlust. It is only level 1 for now, uh, but... In these team fights, when you're sieging high ground and stuff like that, these BP brawlers lose a lot of their effectiveness. Like, yeah, they're bad in the lane, man. They are like so badass. They run at your face, dive under the tower, they laugh, haha, -ha, you know, doing their thing, beating you down with some orb of venoms or something along those lines. But when it actually comes to the full out tower defense, not many times you can just, you know, kind of waltz your way into the whole enemies and just kind of stand there punching somebody or throwing out fire blasts or anything like that. You do get chewed up pretty quick. Yeah, you don't have these sort of vacuum engagements where you're one-on-one, one-on-two, -on -one, one -on and you bully people. There is no bullying yeah. when you walk into the platoon of DC heroes. And speaking of platoons, they've walked into Sovereign, the Lone Wolf, over in the Dire Jungle, shackled up through his ultimate, Radiant's AUI. Holds him in place, and they'll even hit him through it. Give him a little HP back, that full sense of security as they finish him off. Shadow Shaman <laughs> gets the kill on that one. We're actually seeing what looks like a Manta style nearly done here for Yawa. That Midas has definitely paid off. 16 minute Midas. Well, I mean, he needed farm and he's getting it. Obviously, a lot of these pushes in the Aegis will certainly help with that. I like the Yasha. Um, I don't know what their timing is. I think Mantis is still fine. Yeah, oh my god. Their I timing is now. Why. Like, yeah. Regardless of items coming in, their timing to push tier 3 is here. Serpent wards are down. The sniper with the Manta Illusion is trying to point their way at these wards. But the Dragon Knight is still up there on the front lines. BKB Shadow Blade ready. Tier 3 drops about half of its health. Yawa still with Aegis. He's going to replicate himself back down towards the bottom lane. There's a tier 1 still standing here, Radiant's honestly. That's free money just ready to be attack. taken. Yeah, and they're not going to try and make any more use of this Dragonite ultimate I, by the looks of it. They'll just group up, either push bottom or top, get a little bit of farm. It's starting to look pretty good here. 
Are you Wonder... why? Where's your money gone? Well, nothing on the career. What, what is he... I think he got demoted to wards. Okay. I was wondering, because he picked up an ether lens like three or four minutes ago, and now oh, nothing much else. So are we seeing some bigger items from 1437? He's got a bit of gold. He bought the gem, of course, not too long ago. And grouping up for what looks like another run into their own jungle. This is really well timed, actually. As long as Yawa doesn't get killed off, Aegis has just been reclaimed. This is the perfect time if they can just find the opening, if they can get that initiation tool onto him. It's a strap not to slow him down. Cast will fly as well, but in comes the rest of the team. Volva with a blink ravage onto four, and in comes 4037. Will slow them down. The retreat here from enemy is just not available. Deathwood is good onto Yawa. He gets the waveform out, but Bulba's the one that's hiding himself away. Glimmered, Invis, hiding, and now turns the Fight Slayer. The poor little Ember Spirit will have to remnant back and then falls into the team fight again, not too far away. And the Tidehunter, not yet finished off. The Purifying Flames healing him up, oh. but finally the Maelstrom proc comes out and TC forced the BKB. Three dead from Digital Chaos, and enemy, they're the ones hunting. They're the ones taking these pickoffs. Dragonite turns to stun, turns to fight, but it's not long until he's dropped himself. Yawar escapes, but at what cost? Four members of his team all give up their lives for the greater good. And they also lost the gem too. Pretty big deal. They actually haven't seen the spot yet. Um, the vision they had provided, obviously not not seen it up there on that high ground. So a little bit of a, a lucky. Oh wait, they have a courier coming. Maybe they wait. Nope. Let's just grab something. 1437 is pinging it. But either way. Uh, most of that just comes down to the Ravage, right? Like, we all know how amazing Ravage is, but this is the second time in the game we've seen using the saving aspect, and with no teammates ready to capitalize on it and actually in position, it's extremely underwhelming. Certainly not worth two, two and a half minutes of cooldown. Uh, first lane of Axe goes to them. Without having Ravage here, just for chaos. This game has swung back and forth pretty immensely, honestly. Frozen? The initiation doesn't do anything. They turn and kill Bulba. That Tidehunter, way too far out from the rest of his team. I wonder, enemy, they're all full health. With Voodoo Restoration and this about and healing them and keeping them healthy, they could potentially oh, they walk themselves the, they finally back. saw the gem. Hey, <laughs> there we go. Mjolnir gem mantis style on your sniper. So the Melorax of Bot did drop. Aghanim Scepter for your Abaddon, okay. Okay, the next fight for Digital Chaos, that's where it gets really I rough. I honestly think they have to stop fighting. They're going to try and draw enemy across the map, go for a bit of split push. They've got AUI with Blink plus his uh, is it level 2. Level 2 Serpent Wards now. They've got Morphling who can get himself across the map pretty easily as well. Just try and play that split push drag game. Yep. Uh, they get enemy outside of their comfort zone. Yeah, going high ground with the Agnums on Abaddon is just so good. Gonna be soaking up a lot of that damage from the Ravage and anything like that, or, or post Ravage as they try and finish off some of his allies. But they don't have the best catch out heroes. Like, there's obviously no Blink Dagger ready and available. It's basically the Ember Spirit. So, Yawar should be essentially free. I don't know how, if he's doing his replicates right, he should be able to extend as far as he can. Right? Uh, I can't imagine anything like maybe a Chain Stun Fire Blast into a cask or something, no. but. I think the farm game is the way to go. There's there's no way they catch him, honestly. Yeah. Well, there should be no way to catch him. Whereas Witch Doctor, well, less said about that, the better. As he just ceases to exist. Sovereign might be might be getting the same treatment. Yeah, I'd find the tier two. I'd be fine for now. TP's away. And Slayer, Remnant's back as well. Back to their tier threes. Digital Chaos don't have a creep wave up here, and they're hunting for heroes. There's no one here. So the time expended. The fact that Yawa came up as well. He's not bottom yeah, lane farming. Yeah, I don't farming. know why he replicated. I, I didn't I, think he was going to. I looked down to bot lane. And I was like, well, at least Morphling's farming, right? No. No. Morphling is up there with the pack. Hunting and looking for kills. It might be that he doesn't have a choice to stay down there because he won't have anyone to replicate. And then that's when he runs into trouble. Because Ember Spear attack. could probably solo him. In fact, he could definitely solo him as long as he doesn't have a replicate up. So I can maybe understand the sentiment then. Roshan has respawned, but who's going to take it this time around? We saw it over on the Morphling previously, and, you know, Digital Chaos, they did some good work with it. They got a lot of damage onto the Tier 3 mid, but they never closed out a good push. They have yet to have that one big team fight, one big push, where they just say, you know what? We're going to cripple you. We are going to economically and map control-wise cripple you. So enemy, I think, perfect move. They realize this. All DC needs is that one perfect team fight. 
If we can be the ones to initiate, they don't get the big jump in with the Ravage. They can't choose their targets. We'll get the picks. Dyer's top tower is under we will set the terms of this engagement. And it's actually over to the side. It's 1437. Glimmer Cape ready. He's going to have to try and get himself in this hide away, but they've got the gem. They see him. That Very big dead. fiery sun above the head of that oracle. Look at him. He's just like, well, you know what? You got me. You bloody got me. Just take my life. Don't, don't chase after anyone else. <laughs> that's, that's pretty comical. We don't see that all too often. <laughs> Someone just sits there and it's like, yep. I am dead. Not gonna try and run, not gonna try and waste your time. Full death ward. Just full, yeah. full death ward, and he's dead. What's next for our Morphling then? Our Morphling friend. Manta style into. into Typically what? it's like Scotty. It's usually one of the bigger M's, unless he wants to go for the E blade. But Abaddon, Ogre, like Witch Doctor is probably gonna bag himself by the time he would even finish that, so he can be extra tanky. I don't think that's the item. Um, it's very person preference. Yaw are definitely one of the more flashy players, so I wouldn't be that surprised, but I think I just like Scotty a bit more for the tank. Yeah, I could see Scotty, E Blade, lots of fly wouldn't be bad. I mean, you're against a sniper, and it's always a little bit annoying with headshot. But. Yeah, maybe he has already committed to an ultimate orb, though, so maybe yeah. that is the item. Maybe, we'll see. See where he heads to. The top push is coming in though. An enemy. All they need is creeps up in the base. Sniper. But his long ass range is just down on the low ground. Taking this tier 3 lower and lower. The rest of his team sitting behind. It has given time oh, for Yama. Oh, they're going to CTC. From that uphill ward. Oh, you're right. Gets out though. That could have been risky if he decided to try and sneak himself in those trees for the duration of the Shadow Blade. Dyer's bottom tower but, is under attack. Like the reload. Oh, dead oh, like Ravage Dome Bulba catches them all pretty much here. Several to drop the BSJ's dead! He's taken out, that's a sniper gone. Out of position, caught completely. Lumpton's gonna be the next to fall, it looks like. As TC's BKB makes him almost invulnerable to damage output here from enemy. Two down. And frozen, you're gonna be the third. Bulba with a gush. No blink, but TC still has the Shadow Blade into stun. Hits first. Nope, doesn't hit first. Goes for the stun. Control and kill. The ogre will be the next casualty of war. So what was the damage done? Tier 3 is on 180, so like 10% HP. Oh, if they catch Slayer here. He's got a remnant, right? He's fine. He's fine. So enemy, a Ooh, little bit overzealous, I reckon. <laughs> well, he's undefeated on Ember Spirit, so there you go. Um, go. Yeah, enemy, like... Uh, I like the play from Digital Chaos because they saw, obviously, the Amber Spirit TP bottom, do this split push. Now, they know there's a remnant here, but it still does take some time, and immediately, they saw him in the creep wave and they jumped. So, got a good Ravage Dyer's off, got the wards right on top of BSJ, and they're very Dyer's scary. Like, you often think about them just in terms of the pushing tower, power and, and towers and everything like that, but if you can get those perfect little traps off, yep. you're going to put a lot of damage in. They've got Slayer now, yep. but Slayer. They, exactly. you all right? It's going to be you close. Good? Are you fine? Oh! Well, 230 HP. I don't know if that's an oh or a eh. Oh, his remnant was about to run out. <laughs> oh, was it? Okay, okay. Yeah, oh. it was like a, a millisecond away from running out when he got out of there. That's what I was concerned I'll about. I'll let you have the Craigasm noise then. Yeah. I'll let you have that. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was just looking at the damage output. I mean, it was getting close, but they just needed like one more nuke, one like waveform or something to finish him off. Well, regardless, Roshan's still yet to be touched by either team. It looks like enemy will be the ones to head into this pit, though. As Daedalus is done for your Ember, BSJ Ultimate Orb still held on to. Guessing well, it's pretty much got to be the Scardi, right? Lincoln's will be okay. It's a. I'm thinking about it now, it's a rough one. Sniper has been the frontliner almost of this lineup, when pushing high ground anyway. So Lincoln's wouldn't actually be too bad, but then you're still dealing with Ravage. I think Scotty's the way to go. Seems like an extremely solid item in this scenario. We're just waiting here to see what they're gonna do. Do they have any centers? Where's that gem at? Loom Dun. Not here. TC. Actually, not gonna take him down as the heal comes in. Loom Dun is kept alive through it all. The Dragonite can't even kill off this little Witch Doctor until the Ravage comes in to cancel the Death Ward and Serpent Wards over the top of the Witch Doctor. Finally bring him down, but. Digital Chaos have already lost three as Bulba will drop an AUI. My goodness gracious me, the Ravage was cooling down. There were three seconds until that Tide can blink and Ravage and just held it and held it, waiting for that moment to strike. But by then, TC had gone in. 
Oracle had initiated. Enemy were just ready and waiting to take that fight, and if you look at it, Aegis over on the sniper. He can now go and stand on front lines with impunity. Yeah, and, man, that Manta style allows him to clear the snakes so fast. Um, I'm not sure. I guess they still just only take two shots, Radiance which is uh, <laughs> a little bit unfortunate. I, I wasn't aware that it worked from a uh, from Manta as well. I guess I just assumed it would be something like creeps or uh, similar. But yeah, he just annihilates someone who pops the illusion. So good item pick up there from BSJ. Well, it's like Phantom Lance Illusion is dealing full yeah. hits to a Tombstone. I still think that's insane, honestly. Well, TC, he might go down here. It's going to be close. Sniper kills Morphling. Sniper not going to kill TC just yet. Oh, okay, yes he will. With the help of Slayer, Slight of Fist will kill that off. But no buyback on your Dragon Knight. Yawa is forced to get back into this game. It's full HP, though. They are all very healthy. And they still have Aegis over on the Sniper. But the big thing is what I flicked my... Oh, this game's over. I flicked does. my vision to GG is called the Witch Doctor. No, Witch Doctor, you have an Aghanim Scepter. Just go, go, use it. Just use it. Just use <laughs> the, the bloody Death Ward. Just use the Death Ward. Come on, you've got Agon. It's not. No, no, not like this. He bought the Aghanim's upgrade. I saw it happen. I was like, right, that's going to end the game for enemy, and he didn't even get to use it. Well, first off. Let's just throw out some massive props, enemy. I think this is one of the teams that I've seen be the most doubted in terms of fandom and everything like that when they first pop out. And now they've 2 0 Leviathan. And they've taken the first game up against Digital Cast. And they looked solid. I mean, we talked about how they had some really good rotations early. They had good map vision, good use of the wards and stuff. I'd say that we would agree that throughout the mid game, they were beating DC in a lot of portions in terms of the warding and stuff like that. And after one successful tower defense in the mid lane, they were able to snowball that, a little bit of a slingshot effect. Right back into a cruise for an easy win, thanks to the early shutdown of Yawar and the Morphling. Yeah, and people were asking before the game, or before the series started, like, who who do we favor and stuff like that. And I was kind of thinking a 1-1 here for enemy wouldn't be out of the question, but it would be DC favored. But after this game, I, I just don't know anymore. I just don't know. DC have a lot of work to do in game number two. Definitely, like, draft-wise, I think it was pretty even. I think DC might have had the slight advantage if they could have executed a little better. But execution-wise, enemy just knew strengths, weaknesses. They knew exactly what DC wanted. And maybe that was one of the biggest downfalls or pitfalls of DC's lineup was it was very obvious. You you even saw it, you know, three picks in. It's going to be a push strat. And I'll try and break down these towers with brute force. But game number two, coming up in a couple of minutes. Myself, Durka, with my co-caster, Mop Packs, Lurker over on stats. We'll be back in a couple of minutes with game number two. Yeah. Oh! 